So I mentioned in that Redbot review a few weeks ago that I was a doobity shadow doing the Redbot dancing review. You do it like this, you do it like that, you do it here and outside there's a cat. You can go, hey, you can go, wow, I'm doing this for the first blooper somehow. Watch the show, watch the review, and I hope it leaves you going, ooh. <laughs> Hello there heroes, I'm the Orange Ranger and welcome to another Power Rangers Ninja Steel episode review. I'm sorry that the past few videos have been a little bit late, work got kind of crazy and pretty busy, and I was just held up in production. But now I've got some time to catch up. However, just because I had time to catch up doesn't necessarily mean I was eager for each of these videos. I actually watched Japanime's review of this episode right before writing this script. And by the way, if you're not watching Japanime's videos as well, do so. He's got the Orange Ranger video seal of approval. That is a smart dude. And sometimes he even picks up on some stuff that I actually missed. Anyway, he said something about reviewing this episode that really stuck with me. His review of this episode of Ninja Steel was also late. So what happened? Did his job also get busy? Was he too busy catching up on other videos? Nope. It was because he didn't want to watch the episode. He was dreading pressing play as he had the episode loaded up. And honest to goodness, the exact same thing happened to me. I loaded up the episode, opened up a word pad right beside it, got myself all ready, and then I sat there for a minute. Then I finally sighed deeply before pressing play. I got about six minutes into the episode before I paused it just to go on Twitter and actually post about how much I was not into this episode already. And then I was so subconsciously happy to not be watching it anymore that I kind of let myself forget that I was watching it and stayed on Twitter for about the next 20 minutes. Well, now that I've got you folks all curious and wondering about how I might have felt about this episode, let's take a look at the 19th episode of Ninja Steel, Helping Hand. Preston and Sarah are riding Sarah's hoverboard when it breaks down. The battery died, and apparently this has been a recurring problem. Preston reminds Sarah that she was looking for an extra credit project for shop class. Understandable, since, you know, her teacher, Mick, definitely wouldn't give her credit, extra credit for, oh, I don't know, being a Power Ranger. So Preston says she can make a new battery for the project. In Sarah's house, whoa, wait a second. These people have houses, but that's a new set. Okay, actually, to be honest, it's probably just the house of somebody on the production staff or something. We see that Sarah has pulled an all-nighter working on this battery, but has not made any progress. Her mother, who it turns out is also an inventor, comes in to show off her new invention. It's a kind of goofy, wacky scientist headset thing that feeds you toast and juice so you can eat while you work. Sarah is incredibly dismissive and kind of rude towards her mother, but her mother still insists that she try the headset. It's voice activated, so of course, Sarah accidentally uses both of the words, toast and juice, in talking about her battery, getting some unexpected breakfast on her. Of course, she decides to blame her mother for this instead of it being just a funny coincidence. She then leaves for school, telling her mother in a nasty kind of a tone that I guess she doesn't have a project for her extra credit. First of all, Sarah, whose fault is that? This is your project, not your mother's. I'm sure you've had plenty of time to get this done. And besides that, you were up all night. She interrupted you for the last five minutes of your morning before you had to leave for school. Secondly, who cares? This is an extra credit project. I'm almost positive that you're at least not 
failing shop class. Third, I will say it yet again, you are a Power Ranger. Mick should be giving you an A in the class just on principle. On the Warrior Dome, Cosmo introduces us to this week's monster, Forcefear. His name sucks and he's just weird. A giant white creature with a huge white face that takes up most of his chest and looks kind of like a Mardi Gras mask, maybe? He's got big giant cardboard tube pole cannons on his shoulders and he's got dragon sword fingers. And his unique power is to create force fields. Of course. In shop class, we see Victor and Monty showing off their extra credit project. They invented a magnet. They do hint that this can attract any kind of metal, so I'm sure that's going to come into play later. But for now, they use it on a hubcap, and it works. Amazing, even them. Wow, the show's actually allowing them to be capable, intelligent characters who do have some upside and aren't just buffoons. Oh no, wait, that violates the Nickelodeon slapstick decree. The magnet activates again on its own, dragging a huge pile of car piece metal onto them. So, you know, they're dead. Again. But no, the metal formed a perfect little cylinder around them. The two of them run off in shame when normally the scene would have ended on that slapstick, so this is going a little differently and seems to be hinting at something. Mick asks anyone else if they have an extra credit project to present, specifically asking Sarah. She starts to say no, but then her mother comes in, carrying her hoverboard, as well as a new supercharger that her mother has made for the battery, which will give it ten times the power. I have several more problems. One, Sarah never actually made a new battery. She came to class saying that she didn't have a project for extra credit. The battery was going to be her project. Two, there is not a teacher on the planet that would knowingly accept the work of a parent as extra credit for their student. Knowingly, I know that any of you parents watching probably have your stories ready about how you stayed up until like 5 a.m. once writing a paper for your kids so they wouldn't fail a class. Did you take that paper to school yourself and tell the teacher that you wrote it for your student? She puts the supercharged battery in, but just as Sarah predicted, it's too strong for the hoverboard, which flies around, crashing into everything, before falling, busted, and charred. Sarah is, once again, a class one, grade A, B word about this to her mother, telling her that she doesn't want her help, and that she's upset about how her mother constantly puts herself in the middle of things. Mick looks over the supercharger curiously as the rangers leave. Calvin, who looked kind of sad about the whole situation as they left, tries to tell Sarah that she messed up, but Sarah's not listening. Redbot detects buzz cam activity at the stadium, which looks a lot more like an arena, but the arena was already destroyed, remember? The Rangers head over there to confront Forcefear, with Brody dropping another one of his classic one-liners, which I'm sure somebody will make a compilation video for at the end of the season. The rangers morph, and Brody goes straight into lion fire mode. So much for not escalating a battle, I guess. He has Preston and Levi take on the monster, further making me question why he felt he needed to go into lion fire mode if he was just going to be fighting Kudabots or Basherbots, whichever ones they were this week. I don't really know or care. And by the way, blue and gold working together again. Again, is this something that happened a lot in the Ninja footage? Again, I've mentally repressed most of the Ninja, so I don't really remember. But it just seems like a lot of blue and gold fighting solo as a pair. Anyway, they don't get anywhere against the monster, and Brody showing up doesn't help. Preston suggests that they throw them at the monster, but that doesn't work either as he puts up this invincible force field. The Rangers decide to retreat, smoke bomb style. Odious teleports down and tells Forcefield that he failed. Because, you know, the rangers retreated, so he won whatever. Anyway, Forcefear suggests just being gigantified from the start next time, making his Forcefield even bigger and stronger. 
The Rangers were actually just hiding around the corner and head back to the base to see if they can figure out a way to get through that force field. However, they're not coming up with anything, so the Ninja Nexus Prism decides to just go ahead and give them the answer. It shows them their three Megazords, a little swirly motion, and then one gigantic Megazord. One of the Rangers, it's either Brody or Calvin, I couldn't quite tell the voice and they were off screen, asks what this means. Preston's the one that actually seems to have been paying attention and says he thinks it means that it wants them to combine their three Megazords. However, this is going to require a new star. Do they have enough Ninja Steel to make another star? Remember last time they had like one little pile of it left and they managed to get two stars out of that. Mick reveals the last piece of Ninja Steel. BS, but whatever. It is the right size to make one more star, but Mick says after this, that's it. And actually, if they need to make more stars, they might have to start melting down some of the older stars. This is a very pragmatic idea, and I kind of like it. For example, why do you need the Rumble Tusk Zord, for example, now that you have the Lion Fire Zord, that's a star that you can melt down and make another one and also explains why you don't see it in the footage anymore. It's really practical. I actually like it. Does the team need five motorcycles? Or as Japanime pointed out, five element stars? Can't they just share one? There are discussions that could be had there and it's a very practical idea in a long-standing battle against evil. However, Mick is on the case. When he realized that they were running low on Ninja Steel, he began scanning the universe for more of it. And everything about that sentence makes my brain bleed. One, you're scanning the entire universe with materials that you found in a high school shop. Nothing came from the Warrior Dome. I don't see how they built anything else. Where did those computers even come from anyway? But that's the discussion for another day. Number two, I may be crazy, but Japanime said this too, and I'm sure others have said it as well. Didn't the show early on imply that what made Ninja Steel Ninja Steel was the fact that it had gathered onto the prism as it traveled through space? Are we now implying that Ninja Steel Ninja Steel is some kind of natural raw material you can just find somewhere? Mick hasn't found anything just yet, but Sarah has the idea of running multiple scans at the same time. Even if that was possible, isn't that something Mick would have thought of already? She says that each one of the Rangers can take a different space quadrant. The quad in quadrant means four. There are six Rangers. And Sarah is the smart one. Mick and Redbot finish the star, and Mick throws it at the prism. And nothing happens, it's blocked and falls directly to the ground. Everybody's very concerned and worried about this. Sarah starts grilling Redbot about how he made it. Is it the right shape? Is it the right weight? Did he polish it properly? Before Redbot gets impatient and ensures her that he made it to the specific specifications of a Megazord star. She apologizes, saying that she was just trying to help, and then flashes right back to her mother, telling her the same thing, and then she told her mother off. She feels like a grade-A class 1 B-word, which is good, because that's precisely what she was. She starts telling Redbot the entire story and what she's learned now, which, to be honest, is a little bit of unnecessary exposition for the audience, but still, overall, I have to say I much prefer this method of delivering the moral of the day than Mick or another one of the Rangers beating the audience about the head with it. Anyway, when she mentions the supercharger to Redbot, she gets an idea. They can hook the star up to the supercharger and supercharge the star. Fantastic thinking, Sarah! Except that doesn't make the first bit of friggin' sense because how is that supposed to help? Force Sphere gets gigantified without having been destroyed. That's a defeat flag right there. But Sarah declares that the star is now fully charged. One, you've never done this before, so how do you know? And two, it's a piece of metal, not a battery. 
Sarah throws the star into the prism, and this time it works. I don't know, maybe the prism just wanted Sarah to be the one to throw it in this time. The prism begins transforming the star, but Preston tells the rangers about the monster. Twice, around a commercial. Mick says he doesn't know how long the star is going to take to be completed, so Brody grabs the lion fire star and says he'll use that megazord to hold the monster off as long as he can. He heads out and summons the lion fire megazord, though its attacks can't get through the force field. The other rangers show up in their megazords, so apparently someone was able to summon the robo red zord and say that they'll stand with Brody and fight as long as they can. Courage! Bravery! The rangers standing to fight in what seems like an impossible situation. Oh, what's that? The star's ready? Okay, forget all that. <sighs> Mick tosses the Ninja Ultra Star to Brody, and he activates it, combining the three Megazords into the Ninja Ultra Zord. What, you're not going to call this one the Ninja Megazord? <laughs> and no, not that Ninja Ultra Zord. The Ninja Steel and Bull Rider Megazord spin the top section of the Lion Fire Megazord around. The Bull Rider Megazord combines with its legs becoming big cannons, and the rest of it kind of just slaps onto the back. The Ninja Steel Megazord combines by sitting inside the chest. Yes, we have an Ultra Zord that has a Megazord sitting in its chest that has a Zord sitting in its chest. Chestception. The rangers look around the cockpit like it's the most amazing thing they've ever seen, despite it being the exact same friggin' set they always use. For goodness sake, Haley even points at the walls! The Zord fight is as short and anticlimactic as an Ultra Zord battle usually is, I will give them that much. They shoot at each other for a bit, they break the force field, hooray! Brody tosses Sarah, of all people, the chainsaw sword, and then leaps out of the Ultra Zord to chop off the giant monster's weapons, because that's a thing he can apparently do now, and then they fire everything they've got at the monster and destroy it. Sarah goes home and apologizes to her mother, and this episode kind of gets two morals of the day with an S. As Sarah apologizes and says that someone wanting to help is never a bad thing, while her mother says that she should have asked before just involving herself. The two start working on Sarah's hoverboard together, and it feels like the episode wraps up right there. But then it doesn't. We have another scene. It is a Victor and Monty wrap-up, but it's different this time. Okay, a little different. Victor and Monty slump down, disappointed that their magnet hasn't found them any rare, valuable materials, especially gold. Monty says there must just not be any gold around. Victor says then they have to find something even more rare and valuable. He grabs the magnet and jacks all the settings up to max. In the meantime, Mick says that he has detected a comet traveling through their solar system that seems to contain a large quantity of ninja steel. The rare raw material, ninja steel. Ninja, a person, a warrior, a legend, ninja steel. Not just regular steel, not just refined steel, ninja steel. <sighs> Mick calls the rangers and lets them know about the comet, the asteroid, the meteor, the whatever it is, and says that they'll be able to use the Astrozord, the star of which he holds up, to go and get the metal out of it. But then the transmission cuts off. The Zord star flies out of his hands and through the wall straight to Victor and Monty's magnet. Encouraged, Victor tries again and every star in the base flies out and straight to their magnet. A buzz cam sees this still on Earth after the Galaxy Warrior show ended for some reason and Galvanax and Odious transport down right away. They take the stars that Victor and Monty gathered, but when they see that the power stars aren't among them, they have Victor and Monty taken up to the ship, and Galvanax declares that this season's finale of Galaxy Warriors is going to be real good. It's a little bit on the nose, don't you think? Does this episode get a star or stars? And how sad is it that I'm asking if it's going to get more than one? Episode 19, Helping Hand. Pros, nice look at Sarah's home life, intrigue right at the end, 
and one of the few Zord situations from this material that I like. Cons, weird errors, and just mistakes in the writing, Sarah stepping out of character to serve the plot, and another pointless story right before the end of the season. Not as bad as Adventures of Redbot, but a little bit worse than Abracadanger. Helping Hand gets one and a half stars out of five. So I mentioned in that Redbot review a couple of weeks ago how it constantly annoys me when they use the same sets regardless of the circumstances week after week. So imagine my surprise this week when the episode basically opens at Sarah's house. Now, like I said, I'm not giving them too much credit for this because I'm imagining that this was just the house of somebody that's involved with the production. This is strengthened by the fact that we never go into the house, we're just in the garage. But still, it was a very refreshing change from the school set that we see every single week, time after time, over and over. Oh, between this review coming out late and the regular spoilers you see every single week, I kind of knew something was going to be happening with Victor and Monty at the end of the episode. I don't really like how they got there, but I do have to admit that the episode ends in a very dramatic place that's actually important to the Ranger plot. Galvanax seems to have every single star that's not one of the power stars. The Rangers don't have any weapons and they don't have any Zords. And Victor and Monty have been kidnapped and taken to the Warrior Dome. Drama! As much as I have expressed my hatred for the Ninja Steel Zords thus far this season, I actually really like the Ninja Steel Ultra Zord. I know it's called the Ninja Ultra Zord, but can we just call it the Ninja Steel Ultra Zord? That name makes a lot more sense. The chestception thing that I mentioned is actually pretty neat. The Ultra Zord is basically a gigantic nesting doll. We even see that when Brody jumps out of it for that crazy nonsensical attack. Brody jumping out of the Robo Red Zord, jumping out of the Mega Zord, jumping out of the Ultra Zord. But who boy do the mistakes in the writing get under my skin. You have the stuff that's actually straight up errors, mistakes, like Sarah telling six rangers to search quadrants. You have the stuff that they forgot what they actually wrote, like Sarah's mom working on a battery that Sarah never actually made. And then you have the stuff that's just weird and nonsensical, like charging metal with electricity and then at some point somehow declaring that process complete. I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this before, but I really hate it when one of the main characters develops a character flaw for a single episode to push the plot along. Sarah was absolutely horrible to her mother in this episode, and we have never seen her display those qualities before towards anyone except Victor, and that was just once, and he deserved it. Yes, I realize that Sarah is a teenager, and teenagers are prone to mood swings, especially when it comes to their own parents. But there's no setup to this. It just happens out of the blue. How about you give us one little tiny moment, even in the previous episode? Maybe Sarah gets a text from her mom and goes like, Ugh, my mom. Sarah, could you bring home some tubing for my newest invention? It's going to be great. Give us a little bit of setup and not just something that's going to go away within the next week. Last week, I ranted about how we spent episode 18 of 20 accomplishing nothing. This week, we spent about 90 to 95% of episode 19 of 20 also accomplishing nothing. Before the writers realized in about the last five minutes, oh right, the finale's next week and rushed us together a nice little cliffhanger. I just don't understand why we have to have these stupid plots that su just support the moral of the just even in the last episodes leading up to the finale where we can actually focus on ranger stuff well i have to admit i may have spoiled this right from the very beginning but i did not think that helping hand was a very good episode and this now makes three bad episodes in a row that would be concerning at any point of a 20 episode season, but leading directly into the finale, wow, that does not inspire any confidence. I have a serious question. Who is enjoying this? I mean, 
I realize that some people do like Ninja Steel. I've gotten comments on my channel's Facebook page telling me that Ninja Steel is good. I respect the right to everybody's opinion, though I very clearly don't agree. I also have somebody kind of semi-harassing me on Twitter, and yes, you know who I'm talking about out there. I am talking about you. About how I bash this show all the time. But, I mean, look at the numbers. Ninja Steel is suffering in the ratings, which seems to pretty clearly show that not even kids are enjoying this. I just find myself really hoping that those ratings aren't used as a justification to eventually cancel the show, when instead they should just, you know, make the show better. Okay. S seriously, I can't even joke about this this time. Next week is the finale of Power Rangers Ninja Steel. We have... We, if we don't get serious this time, I just, I don't even... Crud, the finale of Ninja Steel. Boy, I should probably be getting together an off-season video schedule, huh? Well, in the meantime, let's take a look at the finale of Power Rangers Ninja Steel, Season 1. Oh, for heaven's sake. Oh, no, 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 no. I wasn't saying the episode is called Oh, for heaven's sake. I'm just irritated once again by another title confusion. You see, when early information about this episode started to come out, the title was listed as Galvanax Rises. Not a bad title, have to say. However, more recent information, such as Ranger Wikia or the Nickelodeon schedule that Burgundy Ranger got, list the name of the episode as Galvanax Rise. Like they were debating between Galvanax's Rise and Galvanax Rises and got stuck in the middle. At this point, I wouldn't be surprised. Let's take a look at the finale of Power Rangers Ninja Steel Season 1, Galvanax Rise. The final battle begins as Galvanax unleashes his devastating attack. Well, that's a promising start anyway. That's going to do it for another Power Rangers Ninja Steel episode review. Thank you, Hero, so much as always for watching. Make sure to like the video by clicking the like button right down below that thumbs up button. In the comments below, let me know what you thought of this episode. Maybe you liked it better than I did. And also let me know what you thought of my review of it. Make sure to subscribe to the channel to see all of my videos and get your notifications set up. Ring that bell so you get notified of whenever I post brand new videos such as this Power Rangers Ninja Steel episode review. And if you would like to toss a little financial support to my channel, you can go to digitaltipjar.com slash orangerangervid, toss little financial tips my way if you'd like to do so, and I would greatly appreciate that. Until next time, unto the finale, my heroes, may the power protect you. Preston and Sarah are writing... <laughs> However, the transmission then cuts off. And Galvanax declares that the finale of Galaxy Warriors... And one of the four... Few... <laughs> and one of the few Zord situations from the... Can we just call this thing the Ninja Steel Ultra Zord, please? Uh, and as much as I've... I've and as much as I've... The Ninja Ultra Zord, but can we just call it the Ninja Steel Ultra Zord? That name makes a lot more sense. Anyway, I forgot the rest of what I was going to say. Ow! And as much of I've, uh, as much of I've, like Sarah telling the Rangers to, I've got somebody even kind of semi harassing me on Twitter. Yes, I knew you. I'm to the, well, that take went to sh. Like they were debating between Galvanax's rise and rise. Farts. Make sure it's the farts and the farts and the peas.